ఫైవ్ లెక్చర్స్ ఆన్ ఇన్స్ట్రుమెంటేషన్ ఇన్ ప్రాసెస్ ఇండస్ట్రీస్ సో వీఆర్ డిస్కసింగ్ ధర్మల్ పవర్ ప్లాంట్ ఇన్ దాట్ వీ హ్యావ్ డిస్కస్డ్ ద ప్రీవియస్ క్లాసెస్ ద ప్రిన్సిపల్ ఆఫ్ ఆపరేషన్ ఆఫ్ ధర్మల్ పవర్ ప్లాంట్ అండ్ వేరియస్ పవర్ జనరేషన్ మెథన్ మెథడ్స్ అండ్ వీ హ్యావ్ డిస్కస్డ్ ఫోర్ సర్క్యూట్స్ ఆఫ్ ధర్మల్ పవర్ ప్లాంట్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ సర్క్యూట్స్ అండ్ దేర్ ఆపరేషన్ అండ్ వీ హ్యావ్ డిస్కస్డ్ ద పిఐ డయాగ్రామ్ ఆఫ్ బాయిలర్ ప్రాసెస్ అండ్ మెజర్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ ఫీడ్ వాటర్ ఫ్లో మెజర్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ లెవెల్ ప్రెషర్ టెంపరేచర్ ఆఫ్ ద బాయిలర్ అండ్ సేఫ్టీ మెజర్స్ ఇన్ ద బాయిలర్ కంట్రోల్ అండ్ ఆల్సో వీ హ్యావ్ డిస్కస్డ్ ఇంటర్లాక్స్ ఫర్ బాయిలర్ ఆపరేషన్ అండ్ టర్బైన్ ట్రిప్ కండిషన్స్ అండ్ వర్కింగ్ ఆఫ్ టర్బైన్ యూనిట్స్ సో ఇన్ దిస్ క్లాస్ వీ డిస్కస్ మెజర్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ స్పీడ్ అండ్ వైబ్రేషన్ ఆఫ్ టర్బైన్ అండ్ కండెన్సర్స్ అండ్ ద టైప్స్ ఆఫ్ ద కండెన్సర్ అండ్ వర్కింగ్ ఆఫ్ కండెన్సర్ వీ డిస్కస్ ఇన్ దిస్ క్లాస్ so the steam turbine governing system uh, it is the important system in instrumentation devices are used in this which controls the turbine speed during start up or no load condition to permit the unit to be synchronized with the grid so this plays very important role by regulating the speed of the turbine so that it should work with uh, in, in synchronism with the grid so during the start up that is whenever whenever uh, that is uh, whenever during the start up or no load condition this uh, governing system regulates the speed of the turbine so it controls the turbine load when running in parallel with the grid generating sets so all protective functions to ensure the safe operation of the unit so there are two methods of uh, governing system nozzle governing and uh, throttle governing so in this the mass uh, the mass flow rate is controlled by throttling the steam by means of control valve that means that we have seen in the previous class the throttle pressure is measured so that the mass flow rate that is the ratio of the fuel and air is controlled appropriately to maintain the to regulate the speed of the turbine and to regulate the steam pressure and finally by regulating the turbine speed so the control valve position will be adjusted to allow the required steam for turbine operation so here the speed of the turbine can be measured with a photo electric type of tachometer observe here the number of pulses generated depends upon the following factors the number of holes in the disc and the shaft speed the turbine shaft speed since uh, the number of holes are fixed therefore the number of pulses generated 
depends on the speed of the shaft only so the electronic counter may therefore be calibrated in terms of speed that is revolutions per minute rpm here see the light source the light source the light is passing through the opaque cube disc so holes are made like this number of holes are made like this you see the shaft here this disc is fixed to the shaft of the turbine so as the turbine rotates the disc also rotates and as it rotates the light source here the light source this is the light source this is the light sensor photo diode or uh, photo multipliers or uh, photo transistors these are the detectors that can be used here in this case photo detector or photo multiplier you can use this is the light sensor so the light is passing through the wall so then from the hole the light reaches the sensor so for each strike of the light that is uh, one event it is considered as one event so the counter which is initialized to zeros it is incremented by one for each light strike so this light uh, the rate at which the light strikes and hence the number of count depends upon the number of holes of the disc and uh, rate at which the shaft is moving the speed of the shaft but the holes are uh, fixed in this case but only the shaft speed is a variable one hence the speed can be evaluated like this by this equation that is p by t p by t so that into 60 rpm into 60 rpm so this is the uh, equation here n is the speed p is the number of pulses that it counted so that is the count of the so counter so here binary counters generally used so the counter that uh, binary to decimal conversion after that we will get the count speed you see uh, that count is divided by the number of holes so the number of holes is the t here that t is a constant this is 60 is the number into 60 both are constant numbers only p is the variable here that is the number of pulses that is the number of count so that means the speed is directly proportional to the number of pulses hence the number of pulses represents the speed of the turbine so this is the photoelectric tachometer that is generally used for the measurement of photo uh, for the measurement of turbine speed you see the diagram here this is the governing system this is the this is the governing system turbine governing system so this control system you have the speed set point here this is the speed set point and uh, this is the speed set point and uh, after that the this is the turbine here 
associated with uh, one compressor so this is the actual turbine so the turbine speed is measured by the device uh, tachometer in this so the present uh, speed value is measured and applied to the control system this is the process variable which is our the our interest so this is the actual process variable so <clears throat> now the governing system after receiving the present speed of the turbine and it compares with the set point of the speed set point and appropriately according to the control algorithm the control system will issue the manipulating signal that is the manipulating variable here mv manipulating variable as a control signal so that the steam here you see the steam is coming from uh, boiler and uh, superheaters so the steam is coming high pressure steam high pressure steam is coming here and uh, this is going through a valve here this is the control valve so based upon the manipulating control signal the percentage of the opening or closing is done so that appropriate amount of the steam is allowed into the turbine section so that the speed is regulated so this is a speed regulation or speed control of the turbine so here actually uh, the boiler section will be available here so from the boiler after superheater generally in the path superheater is there and not only superheaters uh, for uh, steam temperature regulation also will be done in this section and uh, with the help of attemperators here in this path a temperator is also available to regulate the temperature of the uh, steam and uh, after that this high pressure steam and the, not only that the steam uh, uh, pressure also will be controlled so that uh, after that that pressure that steam is coming through a wall main wall governor wall you can call it as governor walls and it is coming to the turbine section and uh, based upon the uh, here manipulating uh, control signal the wall correspondingly in proportion to that uh, it is open or close generally uh, mainly the tachometer is uh, fixed to the shaft here the, the, the turbine shaft to this uh, turbine shaft the tachometer is fixed and uh, it is uh, comprised of uh, uh, light source and uh, disc and uh, which is having holes in that and uh, one photo multiplier is also available and with that the speed is converted into light signal and that light is converted into the light is converted into electrical signal so that electrical signal is the speed signal which is uh, treated as the process variable and it is given to the electronic governing control system turbine governing control system now after once the process variable that is the speeds value present speed of the turbine is received by the control system it will compare that value with the set point if there is any deviation and then it will issue manipulating signal that is a control signal to the final control element that is here control valve so that so that 
the appropriate amount of the steam inlet will be regulated and allowed and uh, are prohibited accordingly into the turbine blades so this is a <coughs> speed governing system so the vibration is a static and a dynamic imbalances of the equipment so this is the vibration measurement so in the vibration measurement that is uh, it will be static type or dynamic type so vibration is the oscillation or moving back and forth of an object so the word vibrations consciously or unconsciously use it as a measure of how well things are running in a process plant so here there are two parameters of our of our interest in this case uh, while measuring vibration measurement uh, here the amplitude and the frequency are the common characteristics of importance for measurement of the vibration when we deal with the several vibration pairs will also will come becomes important because so the third parameter is the pairs that also will be considered in some cases so now let us consider the condenser the steam condenser is a mechanical device which converts the low pressure exhaust steam from the turbine into water so or in other words it is a device which is used to condense the exhaust steam of the turbine into water so it does so with the help of cooling water circulated into it from the cooling tower let us consider the thermal power plant here if you observe see this is a the turbine so this is the turbine here turbine section and uh, you have this is the governing wall that that just now we have discussed the turbine governing wall which uh, the steam will be regulated where the the inlet steam will be regulated by this wall that control loop we have discussed just now and uh, once the steam runs the turbine the steam temperature and pressure drops and this uh, steam will come out of the turbine into the condenser like this this is the exhaust steam so the exhaust steam is coming to the condenser so the steam here the condenser this is the condenser this condenser will convert the exhaust steam into the water how it can convert it can convert the steam into water with the help of cooling water circulation so you observe here here is the cooling tower and uh, continuously from the cooling tower the water cool water is being circulated pumped like this this is a continuous process continuously the cooling this is the fourth circuit we have discussed this is the fourth circuit we have discussed so continuously the cooling water is being circulated through the condenser with the help of cooling tower and pumps so the exhaust steam is coming and uh, it is in contact with the uh, cooling sections and so that the heat exchange heat transfer will take place thus converting the steam into water so that condensate 
is once again pumped into the into the boiler like this through these devices so this exhaust steam after conversion this condensate water is being pumped in this direction into the boilers unit so now let us consider this condenser let us uh, how does it work how does it uh, what are the uh, controlling sections so let us consider this point this uh, loop and uh, how it uh, converts let us continue now let us consider the steam condensing plant here if you observe here the parts let us observe this is the boiler now you see the boiler this is the boiler so the boiler uh, producing the steam uh, which is running the steam turbine here this is the steam turbine next uh, the exhaust steam is coming like this this is the exhaust steam this is the condenser c condenser c and uh, observe here this condensate is coming out of the condenser that is water is coming out of the condenser so this is a uh, this pump is pumping cep is the condensate extraction pump so this is the cep this is pumping the water into the hot well that is steam condensing plant so this is the steam condensing plant hot water hot well so from this the water it is the it is pumped into the boiler once again so that is the um, boiler feed pump this is the boiler feed pump so this boiler feed pump will pump the condensate water into the boiler like this so you see observe here so the steam is coming here into the turbine from the turbine condenser and from the condenser water the water is pumped like this into the boiler like this this is the loop this is the loop so this is a uh, this condensate operation conversion operation is possible with the only this loop so cooling tower loop so the cooling water is being circulated through condenser like this this is the cooling tower this is the cooling tower now the water is pumped uh, through with the help of this pump it is pumped into the condenser like this that is condenser cooling water pump this pump is called condenser cooling water pump so this will pump the cooling water into the condenser and from that uh, the heat is exchange will take place and that water comes into the cooling tower so that once again it is cooled down and being so initially initially the water may be taken from makeup water may be taken from river like this into the condenser that is a initial start up water so after that uh, this is a cooling tower will be used continuously this job will be done by the cooling tower uh, this process goes on so the conversion of steam into water is done with the help of cooling tower water circuit here another point we have to discuss that is the this pump is the 
this pump is the air extraction pump so the air is extracted from the compress uh, condenser so it will be like this done like this so now with this the working and the importance of steep steam condenser is discussed so the steam condenser receives the exhaust steam from one end and comes in contact with the cooling water circulated within it from the cooling tower as the low pressure steam comes in contact with the cooling water it condenses and converts into water so that is the heat exchange will take place it is connected to the air extraction pump and condensate extraction pump so the air will be extracted from the condenser and uh, the condensate will be extracted into the hot well so after the condensation of the steam the condensate is pumped to the hot well with the help of condensate extraction pump the air extraction pump extracts the air from the condenser and creates the vacuum inside it the vacuum created helps in the circulation of cooling water and flow of condensate downward so that is the purpose of these two pumps let us consider the steam condenser types there are two types we have that is jet condenser and surface condenser jet condenser are also called as mixing type condenser and the surface condenser are called as non mixing type condenser so this is a jet condenser type in this there are two varieties parallel flow type and counter flow type jet condenser so two diagrams are shown here so this is a this is a parallel flow jet condenser and uh, this is the counter flow jet condenser now let us uh, consider parallel flow jet condenser in this exhaust steam is coming to the condenser and uh, we have the chamber is like this perforated trays are available inside so the chamber shell is having such type of uh, trays so that the steam gradually flows down now finally because of this observe here the cooling water is be is being circulated through trays like this so this is the cooling water from the cooling tower so the cooling water is coming like this this is a perforated trays through this trays the cooling water is being is being run and because of this uh, heat exchange take place and uh, now at the bottom we have uh, the condensate water and that condensate water is uh, pumped into the hot well with the help of uh, condensate extraction pump so this is the condensate extraction extraction pump so which is taking the pumping the water from condenser into the hot well from the hot well the water goes to pump to 
the boiler like this and uh, observe here if there is any overflow occurs that can be uh, pumped into the cooling pond so that is also that provision is also there observe here the water the cooling water is being circulated in parallel with the uh, in parallel with the uh, steam hence it is called parallel flow jet condenser now let us consider counter flow jet condenser here the observe here the exhaust steam is coming like this so this is the exhaust steam coming into the condenser so this is the condenser section here into the condenser the exhaust steam is coming like this and it is directed upwards like this the steam is directed upwards like this so we have the perforated uh, trays which will sprinkle cool water here then <clears throat> what happens is the water cooling water is counter flowing that that is opposite that is perpendicular to each other steam and cooling water moment is in counter flow 90 degrees so finally here we have the condensate extraction pump here this will extract the condensate water and pump it into the hot well from the hot well this water is pumped into the boiler section and uh, there is a air extraction pump here air extraction pump on the top and that will uh, make uh, vacuum creation so that uh, the exhaust steam runs upward and uh, that counter flow cooling water makes it to, to condensate so here this is the cooling tower this is the cooling tower cooling tower and the cooling water is uh, circulated being circulated like this this is the cooling water circulation so this is the counter flow type of jet condenser so this is the parallel flow that means uh, uh, exhaust steam and uh, cooling water both are running in parallel but here in opposite direction so the jet condenser is a condenser in which the condensate gets mixed with the cooling water that's why it is also called as mixing type condenser so this type of condenser is used sometimes because it lost some of the condensate and requires high power for the pump during the process of condensation so in jet condenser as the condensate is not free from the salt so it cannot be used as a feed water for the boiler it can be used at the place where sufficient amount of good quality water is available so this is a jet condenser next another type of condenser we have surface condenser this is non mixing type condenser 
so that means the cooling water does not uh, mix with the exhaust steam uh, they are just in contact with each other so that's that is a surface condenser so up to jet condenser mixing type it is enough for us for our syllabus so now we have discussed uh, uh, today the PIE diagram of boiler process and the measurement of uh, feed water flow and the measurement of level here this is the feed water flow regulation here we have discussed this and uh, you see the feed water is coming and uh, with the level control we regulate uh, the feed water flow rate into the boiler drum so this is a uh, the one and uh, next three element system is also we have discussed this is the measurement of the pressure also we have discussed uh, in this the throttle pressure uh, we have discussed and the next uh, we we take uh, we discussed the cascade control system in which master pressure control system is there and the combustion control system is there which is uh, uh, this cascade control unit will regulate the steam uh, throttle pressure or uh, what is that uh, boiler pressure here we can uh, regulate with the help of uh, uh, percentage uh, that is the ratio of uh, fuel and air inlets into the boiler section so that the throttle pressure can be regulated next uh, we have discussed steam temperature measurement in this uh, we have considered uh, these superheaters so these these superheaters are placed between uh, uh, superheaters first stage and the second stage superheaters so that uh, uh, the spray water will be sprinkled upon the steam to uh, bring down the temperature of the steam if it is excess and uh, otherwise uh, if it is lower uh, we will stop the uh, sprinkling of the spray water so that the steam temperature can be regulated this steam temperature here it is measured by here the temperature transmitter unit is there which will measure the actual temperature of the steam and uh, it will be given to the temperature control system in which according to the algorithm implemented in the temperature control system and by comparing it to the present value of the steam temperature with the set point it will regulate the uh, final control element wall control wall uh, so that uh, the spray water uh, can be appropriately stopped or uh, sprinkled in appropriate amounts upon the steam so this is a uh, another one and we have discussed the safety measures uh, we should take in the thermal plant and the boiler level we have discussed and also we have discussed uh, different interlocks uh, we have discussed so that uh, uh, next we have discussed uh, turbine trip conditions in which uh, various uh, conditions when the tri uh, turbine is to be tripped uh, the those uh, conditions we have discussed and uh, next uh, we have discussed the steam turbine type and uh, we have the impulse turbine and reaction turbine and we have seen certain uh, uh, turbines and we have discussed the working principle of the turbine system and we have discussed governing speed governing system in this uh, we have two methods that is the nozzle governing and the throttle governing and uh, throttle governing we have taken and the photoelectric tachometer it is discussed here so in this photoelectric tachometer uh, we have a vacuum disc uh, in which there are holes and uh, the speed is directly proportional to the number of pulses the counter counts so that gives the speed of the turbine unit so because the number of teeth and uh, uh, 
that is uh, fixed hence the speed is directly proportional to the number of pulses p here we have taken uh, the speed governing system in which uh, the speed of the turbine is measured it is the uh, process variable and the next uh, according to the set point of the speed uh, the governor system will issue manipulating variable signal that is the control signal to the final control element so that appropriate uh, uh, amount of the steam is allowed to the turbine according to the demand and next we have discussed the vibration measurement in this uh, we have to measure the amplitude of the vibration and the frequency of the vibration so those two parameters sometimes uh, phase also will be measured so these uh, parameters we have to measure in the vibration measurement next we have discussed the condenser so this uh, will give us uh, the types of the condenser and the condenser loop if you observe here there are uh, cooling circulation uh, loop with the help of cooling tower and uh, next condensate flow uh, loop through boiler this is another loop there are two loops we have discussed here and uh, now now uh, let us see the instrumentation uh, here involved uh, here you see that is uh, so in this we have the boiler and the steam turbine and the cooling tower and the steam condenser air extraction pump and the condensate uh, extraction pump and the hot well and the boiler uh, feed pump and uh, condenser cooling water pump and makeup water pump so these are the and uh, we have discussed the working of condenser in this we have seen uh, two types of condenser that is the jet condenser or surface condenser and uh, jet condenser is the mixing type condenser and uh, surface condenser is the non mixing type condenser observe here in these two condensers uh, uh, mixing type both are mixing type that is a parallel flow and a counter flow jet condenser you see the direction of the uh, flow of uh, uh, steam and uh, cooling water the based upon this uh, the count uh, the arrangement because the physical arrangement if you see uh, observe here the exhaust steam is coming like this the exhaust steam and the cooling water is coming like this here uh, trays are there which will sprinkle uh, the cooling water and uh, now both exhaust steam and this uh, cooling water mixed in this uh, condensate chamber shell so finally at the bottom you have the condensate converted water and uh, which is to be pumped into the hot well from the hot well it is pumped into the boiler section so there is a boiler drum and into that it is pumped and now the steam is once again produced here the steam is passed on to the exhaust steam is uh, passed onto the turbine and from that exhaust steam comes to the condenser now uh, in the counter flow jet condenser uh, we have the exhaust steam flow direction will be like this and the cooling water direction flow will be like this so this uh, here because this is the counter flow type hence it is called uh, counter flow type because uh, the direction of the flow of uh, 
cooling water and exhaust stream is in opposite direction so finally this uh, condensate is available at the bottom of the condensate shell and uh, now this condensate is pumped into the hot well from the hot well this is pumped to the boiler section from the boiler it comes to the uh, as a steam it comes to the turbine from the turbine exhaust stream comes to the condenser like this so this is a continuous process with this uh, we conclude our lesson uh, in the next class we will discuss uh, the new chapter thank you